All right. I want to welcome everybody that's joining us now by TV, radio, live streaming from around the world. And uh, if you're listening by radio, you can go to our website at www.theshepherdshouse.net for the entirety of this program. And let's remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. And we're going to let the camera person just kind of look at our nativity scene. Uh, let the folks at home uh, look at that for just a moment. And I hope that your home is thinking about Christmas this way than thinking about a fat elf coming down the chimney. Amen. <laughs> I hope that the commercialism uh, part has not ruined your Christmas and caused you to look at it the wrong way. This is about uh, giving things to folks that uh, that are less fortunate than us, showing expressions of love to family and different ones, but remembering uh, that this is the Lord's birthday, and this is what this is all about. Amen. That's more important than anything else. Amen. All right. In the Word of God, in Exodus chapter 14, uh, verse number 10, the Word of God says, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. In Jude, in the New Testament, in the book of Jude, chapter number 1, verse 15 says, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed of and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit, but beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the loving name of Jesus, we come before you this day, thanking you, Lord, for being such a good God, asking you, Lord, to move in a mighty and a powerful way, Father, to touch the hearts 
of all that are here today. Father, I pray, dear God, that you would move, Lord, on the hearts of those that are uh, listening to us, Lord, from around the world or watching us through live streaming or TV. Father, I pray, God, to move into the homes and touch each and every person that they might have a blessed Christmas. Lord, that the Christmas season this year might cause them to focus, Lord, more upon loving each other and loving those that are distant and those that are abroad. I pray, God, to help us have compassion on each and every one. Father, forgive us of our shortcomings. Lead us away from temptation. Lord, and deliver us from the evil of this world and of the evil of these times that we're living in now. Father, I pray, dear God, that you would move mightily. Our Father, upon us today, for we need the anointing of the Holy Ghost to fall upon us, for it will be impossible, Lord, for us to preach, Lord, without the mighty I touch in the mighty hand of God resting upon us this day. We just pray that your name would be praised, uplifted, and glorified for now and forevermore. And it's in the loving name of Jesus we humbly pray and ask these things. Amen. Looking back into the Old Testament, we see a time here where God's people were in bondage and how uh, that they'd been uh, many years under the thumb of Pharaoh and how that they uh, were miserable and how they were having to uh, make brick and how they were having to serve him. And many things uh, were coming against them and they were very, very unhappy and they cried out unto the Lord because uh, of their uh, being miserable and very unhappy because of the situation. And the Lord sent them a leader, a deliverer by the name of Moses that had a speech impairment. Moses was one that had killed a man. Man, sounds like a different type of leader than you see a lot of times today, but God chooses, uh, amen, uh, those, uh, amen, that are humble and those that will allow him to serve him. And the Lord sometimes does things, uh, amen, a little bit differently than what we we think, amen, or that's the norm, amen. We have to get outside the box if you're going to think like God. If you're going to think like he thinks, we got to look above, amen, the problems that we got and beyond this life and beyond this little corner of Kentucky or wherever it is that you're living or whatever country that you're in, amen, look beyond that and see a great big world, a great big universe, and a great big God, amen. But here they were looking at their problems. They were focusing uh, on them being miserable as if they were the only ones. Uh, amen. And God sent Moses. Uh, and Moses uh, went through a lot of arguments and fighting uh, with Pharaoh. And finally because uh, of the death of the firstborn of all of the land of Egypt, uh, Pharaoh had finally come to the place uh, and the realization that he had lost uh, and learned his lesson. Uh, so he allowed them to be set free. Here they went across the wilderness. God making a way. But here behind them God was the dust of Pharaoh and his army because as soon as they got gone, Pharaoh realized, I'm losing all of those people and I cannot stand not to have power over their lives and control over them anymore. Man, don't that sound like the devil? As soon as we get saved and brought out of Egypt, amen, the devil tries every way he can to get us back in to bondage. It makes him mad because he's lost us. And now then because he can't pull us into the hole that he's in, he's angry. He's hot after the church. He's right after us. He's right on our trail. But I'm thankful that God, amen, has gone before us. He's got a plan. He's going to make the way. Amen. So here they were. Here they had the enemy right behind them. And they came unto the Red Sea. And then the Moses, uh, amen, and the church, uh, amen, the church and the pastor had a disagreement. Amen. The pastor said, let's believe in God. Let's uh, put our faith and trust in him. And the church said, we done tried to tell you. We never would pay for it if you built it. 
We tried to tell you it wouldn't work. We didn't need a van. We tried to tell you we don't need to let all them people come into the church. We tried to tell you this ain't going to work. We'd have been better off, uh, Moses, if you'd have left us alone. We tried to tell you before we'd done this, uh, let us serve the Egyptians. Uh, it's better for us to stay right here, just like we've been all these 400 years, uh, amen, under bondage, uh, than to get out there in the wilderness that we don't know nothing or nobody and do something brand new and wind up getting killed. Uh, it's better to go ahead and just lick our wounds, uh, take our medicine. Boy, that's the theology of a lot of people today. I'm just going to sit down here and mourn in the condition that I'm in. But you know what? I'm tired of mourning over the condition that I'm in. I'm going to pray, put my faith in my trust in God and let God, amen, get me out of the situation. I, I know that personally I'm going through something right now, so I'm going to preach part of this to me. Amen, because I know my God, uh, amen, is going to get me through every situation. Uh, amen, sometimes everywhere you turn, uh, everywhere you look, uh, amen, there's nothing but naysay, uh, amen, in darkness, in gray areas, uh, and what ifs, and this could happen, and that can happen. Uh, if there's anything that's ever damaged the church, uh, amen, it's the spirit of fear. And the devil today puts out, uh, amen, the spirit of fear, amen, of what might happen, uh, amen, this is different. I'm afraid to do this. If you don't take a chance, you'll never get out of the hole that you're in. Amen. I'd rather get out, amen, on the road and hit a tree, amen, than sit in the house the rest of my life. Amen. Amen. It's time to get up. Amen. To move on. Amen. Get out of your despair. Get out of your lifestyle. Amen. That you've been in for so many times. If you had a train wreck, crawl out of the wreckage. You don't lay in there and say, Oh, I've fallen and I can't get up. Y'all cut me out. No, I kicked the blessed glass out and crawl out. Amen, if I was in a rail car and the thing turned over, amen, I wouldn't lay in there and feel sorry for myself. I wouldn't be afraid, amen, of the Indians get me. If I get out of the safety of the rail car, I'd get out of the wreckage. Amen, to know that there's hope, amen, in Christ Jesus. But here they were, amen, right here at the Red Sea. And they said, we've had it now. We tried to tell you, you hard-headed preacher, you, you done let us out here and we're about to die. And they cried out to the Lord. And Moses cried out to the Lord. And God spoke to Moses and said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen, I'm gonna Read the last part of that uh, uh, verse there in Exodus 14. Uh, in verse number 14, uh, this is what uh, Moses said. He said, the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Uh, boy, won't they preach. Uh, amen. The Lord, that's the title of the message today. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Uh, amen. We read in the New Testament, uh, amen, where there was a time, amen, where the church was murmuring, uh, Amen, it was a time, amen, where there was fear. Amen, it fell over the church. Amen, sometimes when we get afraid, all we can do is whine. Amen, and talk about the problem that we've got. Amen, but it's faith. Amen, it says, by his grace, I shall prevail. Amen, it doesn't matter if I have money or property. I'm gonna make it to heaven. It doesn't matter if I have friends or foe. I'm gonna march on. Amen. And make it into the kingdom of God. Amen. God told Moses later on in that chapter, he said, now take this rod, hold it up, put it up against the sea. Amen. And that sea parted. He said, and let them walk over on dry ground. There's a way to get out of this mess and I'll make it. Amen. A good way. Amen. Normally, when you drain a pond, you got slug and slush and mess and mud about knee deep or half knee deep. I remember as a boy growing up, amen, we had a drought when I was about nine years old. There when I lived in Allen County, our pond went dry and the frogs was leaving. We had some fish in that pond and uh, my dad told me, he said, I hate for them fish to die. He said, the pond's gone dry. We're gonna take some buckets uh, and we're gonna take them things down to the creek. And he said, get your bucket and get your pants down. You're going to go out there in your short britches. 
I was nine years old. Thank God I was nine. I'd have got a whooping if I'd been older. I wouldn't have done it. Hey, man, so easy. But anyhow, I remember going out there in the muddy pond and taking a bucket and picking up them catfish and putting them in that bucket that had a little bit of pond water in the bottom. Uh, Brother Wayne and I, I just kept on uh, going, and my feet would go, and i go, as my feet would sink down in that old nasty stinking mud. Uh, amen. Normally that's what you got. But see, when God's in it, uh, amen, you don't have to wade in the mud uh, when he makes a way for you to get out. Uh, amen. He paves the road for you. Amen. He makes a driveway for you. Amen. He opens up, uh, amen, a new channel in a new way that you hadn't thought of before. Uh, amen. You've been doing it wrong all this time. But when you let me, uh, I'll just blow the pond dry and fix you a subway uh, to go into or a driveway rather amen to go into and it'll be a whole lot easier uh, amen Moses said that uh, stand still God's going to get this for you God's going to make a way out of this for you and I want to preach uh, amen to all of us today uh, amen this thing that you're going through uh, it's got you under pressure uh, amen I know that you would like to get that elephant uh, amen off of your head uh, amen and off of your back because the thing's mashing you yeah, amen and the thoughts is just about crush you. But all I'm going to say is the same thing, uh, amen, that Moses said. Uh, stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. Uh, God's got your back. Uh, God's going to get you through this thing. Uh, God's going to help you, uh, amen, through this situation. Uh, and you're going to wind up being better off, uh, amen, than you were before. Uh, amen, the devil wants to tell you you're about to die. Amen, the devil wants to tell you that you ain't going to make it. Uh, amen, the devil wants to tell you, amen, that God God has left you. Uh, he's abandoned you here and left you to die by yourself. I want you to know today, uh, amen, that God don't have any orphans. Uh, amen, if you're a child of the most high God, uh, amen, he's tied to you. Uh, amen, as long as you're on this planet, uh, amen, he don't ever abandon you. Uh, he don't die and leave you. He don't drop you off like a dog, uh, amen, or a stray cat, uh, amen, in the community and leave you there, uh, amen, to suffer, amen, for yourself. I saw this little video this morning that broke my heart. Uh, a pastor friend of mine uh, over in Kenya sent me this and it was a young boy about uh, seven years old uh, that only weighed uh, about 20 something pounds. Uh, he was only about three foot tall because of malnutrition. Uh, polio had struck his body. Hey, Amen. He was laying there and the only way he could move uh, was take his elbows and drag his little naked body uh, through the dust and it was so hard to see that little fella there go through that stuff but see what the parents had done. Uh, the parents had abandoned him. Uh, the parents had left him to die. The parents had left him, uh, amen, for the lions and the, the jackals and the other animals, uh, amen, to eat them up, uh, amen, and get rid of the problem. But I want to tell you what our God done. He sent his son to die on the cross uh, to set us free from our sins, uh, amen. He decided, I made you and I'm going to make a way for you to escape the devil. I'm going to make a way for you to escape the jackals uh, and the lions uh, and the tigers uh, and all the things that's sent out there to destroy you and to kill you. Uh, I'll just make a way, and not only will I make a way, but I'll pave a way to glory, amen, through the Holy Ghost that you can walk in victory uh, every day till you get to her. Amen, every one of us is going to have trials. Uh, every one of us is going to have tests. Uh, every one of us is going to have to go through some times uh, and some seasons. Uh, amen. Sometimes I think the hell that I'm going through uh, amen ain't left in a long time. I just go from one level to another. But every time I go to another level, uh, God opens up another door and I step on another devil. Uh, amen. And I just keep on going on. Uh, amen. There's victory in Christ Jesus. Uh, amen. There's hope. Uh, amen. Through the help of the Lord. Uh, amen. We just need to stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. Uh, amen. And wait upon God and allow him to have time to get to your house. Amen. Sometimes, uh, amen, it takes him a while to get to her. Amen. He's the only one I ever knew could be four days late and be right on time. He's the only one I ever knew, uh, amen, that looks like he's done forgot you before he ever shows up. It's not to scare you. It's to cause us to trust him. Amen. He can be there, amen, on his way and you not be able to see it the entire time. Amen. Here was a whole 
uh, 400,000 people. Uh, amen. With the exception of Moses and Aaron uh, and another or two, every one of them said, let's just go back to the world. Uh, let's just go back to bondage. Uh, amen. It was easier when I was living in sin. Uh, amen. That's what the devil will try to tell. Amen. Christians sometimes. Uh, amen. That you ought to just get out of church uh, and you ought to just quit. But I'm like Job. Uh, you talk like a foolish woman is what he told his wife. Uh, amen. He said, uh, 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 let God uh, uh, kill me, slay me, but I'm going to still serve him. Uh, there ain't nothing going to keep me from serving him. Uh, amen. We need to put our faith and our trust in God. Uh, amen. I know that times is going to be hard, uh, but sometime or another, there's going to be a door when you least expect it pop up, uh, and you're going to say, well, it was right there the whole time. I didn't see it. <laughs> I walked right past that door and didn't realize that door was there. I walked right past that blessing every morning uh, and didn't realize it was there. Uh, amen. See, God has a way, uh, amen, of revealing things and bringing things, uh, amen, for you. Uh, amen. You can run across a whole lot of things, uh, amen, this hurts you. I mean, I know some's been through two or three uh, different relationships, uh, amen, got a hold of a bad man or got a hold of a bad woman, two or three of them, amen, is that the matter, amen, and just about think, well, every other one, uh, in the country is a nut, but there's going to be some that'll love you, uh, amen, like you're a princess, uh, amen. There's going to be somebody who's going to love you like you're a prince, uh, amen, that's out there, uh, amen. You just hadn't seen them yet, uh, or you don't realize they are available. They could be the one passing the offering plate in a local church. Amen. They could be uh, somebody who works for the health department. Uh, it could be somebody who works at the bank. Uh, it could be that young man that's sacking groceries down at Houchins. Uh, amen. It could be that young girl or woman. Uh, amen. That just started being the bank teller. Amen. That smiled at you the other day. You don't ever know. Uh, amen. God's got a way of making things. Uh, amen. God has a way of getting things. Uh, amen. There and the right things. Uh, amen. To the place to where you'll be free. Uh, amen. To serve him. Uh, Amen. Today you may be having to shout, amen, with your head sticking out from under the devil's foot. Amen, but shout. <laughs> amen, because there's going to be a time. Amen, he's going to be gone. Amen, after this day, Moses said, you'll see the Egyptians forever no more. Amen, there's going to be a day coming. Amen, it's that thing that the devil said. Amen, was sent to destroy you. It ain't going to bother you no more. You won't be thinking about it. Amen, see, when they got out in the middle of the Red Sea, amen, or got out almost to the end there, as they was coming out, uh, on the other side of the Red Sea. Uh, here come old Pharaoh and his army. Here they went right out in the middle. Of, amen. They said, you can cross over on dry ground. We can too. But when that last Israelite, uh, amen, climbed up that bank, uh, amen, over to the other side, uh, amen, and was in pure safety, amen, God took his hand, uh, amen, that was a hold in the water back, uh, and he brought it back. Uh, amen. When he did uh, every bit of Pharaoh's army, horses, in chariots, amen, were immediately covered up with water and they were never, ever, ever seen anymore. Amen, Moses said, you just wait upon God and that thing that's scaring you to death, you won't even have to think about it anymore after this day. The darkest hour is just before dawn. Amen, the hardest step will be the last one you make just before stepping into victory. Amen, the pathway, amen, Amen to happiness sometimes. Uh, amen is full of rocks and cactus. Uh, amen thorn trees on both sides. Uh, amen are scratching you. Uh, amen a devil behind you and a jackal in front. Uh, amen a growling and a barking. Uh, amen but through the help of the Lord. Uh, amen there's a brighter day tomorrow. There's a brighter way on the other side. Uh, amen there's a better way. Uh, amen in front of us if we'll keep our faith uh, and our trust in God. Uh, amen after this day he won't bother you anymore. It's amazing what God can do in a day's time. Hey, man. I remember going in a little farmhouse. I lived there in Allen County. That thing's burnt down now and not there anymore on top of a hill there in Allen County on top of all those rocks and <laughs> thistles and all that stuff there on that old poor farmland. There was a house and one Sunday, uh, my marriage wasn't in too good a shape. It's been many, many years ago. Me and her's been married for, uh, be 41 years this coming May. Uh, we've been married. We've been together a long time. and We were having some problems. Most of it was me. I was uh, under conviction and miserable, and I thought it was my duty to make everybody miserable too. 
You ever heard the old saying, misery loves company? Amen. I was mad at her because she wasn't miserable. <laughs> Amen. Uh, that's what you get when you get out of the will of God. Uh, amen. I went into the bathroom that evening. Uh, amen. I was just mad at the world, full of fury, full of rage. Uh, I wrecked my car. Things wasn't going right at work. Uh, make me work six days a week. Uh, amen. I was wore out, putting in all them hours and all this other stuff. And I was the miserable person you ever seen. Now then, didn't have no money. Done wrecked my car. Uh, now what in the world was I going to do? I couldn't buy a car. I couldn't do anything. I went in the bathroom that evening and I was in a bathtub and I was going over all this stuff and I said, I can't take it anymore. And I said, what is it I've got to do? I'm trying to raise my little boy and I'm trying to be good to my wife, or I thought it was. And the Lord said, preach. I heard the voice. I shook all over. I said, oh, Lord, I ain't no shape to preach the word. He didn't argue with me. Amen, over that, but I got out of that bathtub. Amen, I crawled out there on the floor, and I went to crying out, Carl, to the Lord. I said, Lord, if you will forgive me of my sins, I'll preach the gospel. I'll do anything. Even if it kills me, Lord, take this load off. I can't take it anymore. I can't stand this guilt. I can't stand this burden. I can't carry it any longer. I've went as long as I can. And all at once, it felt like a cover of burden. Uh, amen, flew out of my chest. I felt like somebody took two 100-pound feed sacks uh, off of my shoulder and said, now then, uh, I paid the price and you can go free. It'll never bother you anymore from this day on. Uh, amen, it's gone. And I want you to know, uh, amen, I come out of that bathroom that day and from that day forevermore, uh, amen, I've not been in that kind of shape. Uh, amen, I've had some ups and downs. Uh, amen, but the guilt and the shame, uh, amen, that I had that day's not been there anymore since. Uh, Amen, I got my life, amen, in order, picked up my Bible and started preaching. Amen, that was in January of 1982. In May of 1982, amen, I bought me a brand new 1982 Chevrolet Chevette, four speed in the floor. Amen. Paul, everybody said, would you take me for a ride? That's the prettiest little car I ever seen. Back at that time, I said, I think it gets 30 miles to the gallon, which ain't much in today's society. Uh, now they can get them 40-something. But anyway, what I'm saying is, uh, I said, I don't know how in the world I'm going to do this, but God's going to make a way. Amen. Started paying my tithes and bought me a car. And before, I was worried about how I was going to get that fender fixed on the old jockey I was driving. And now then, I had a brand new car and started paying my tithes in the same month. Amen, or the same year. See what a difference it makes when you get away from Pharaoh. See what a difference it makes when you get out of Egypt. See what a difference it makes when you put your mindset, I'm going to follow God. Amen, if it's rough, if it's easy, if it's hard or soft, if it's long or if it's short, it don't make no difference to me. I'm going to follow God. I put my mind, amen, to seek in the face of Jesus. I put my mind and walk in the highway of holiness. I put my mind to not have a bad relationship, but have a good one. I put to my mind to step on the head of depression. I put my mind, amen, on praying out to the Lord until God ends this thing right here and for now and never to bother me anymore. Amen, I want you to give God praise. Amen, the Lord can... I kill this thing, uh, amen, that's about to get you. Now, there's some things, uh, amen, he's going to take us out of, uh, and there's some things uh, he's going to give us power to get over. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, if God don't remove it, he'll give you the power to look at it, uh, amen, lift up your head, uh, amen, and say, it ain't, it ain't getting to me. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and share this. I had a lunatic uh, atheist uh, attacked me in one of my sermons that I done uh, on Facebook here not long ago, just in the last few days and uh, last two weeks. And anyway, he had this little smirky look on his face, and he said, "I was preaching about Jesus," uh, and he said, "This super Jesus, this invisible Jesus, and this imaginary Jesus, this super God that's going to come flying through the air and take care of everybody's problems." Ha ha, making fun of it. 
when I was a young Christian, that would bother me. I just said, well, if you ain't got no more sense than that, you might not believe in him, but I got a whole heart full of him. <laughs> Amen. It's not because of whether or not I know he's real, I can feel him in here. Amen. I don't just believe, but I know that he's real. Amen. You might say, well, he's a super God. Amen. He's not imaginary. He's not invisible. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. But I want you to know when this ground goes to shaking, amen, you hear something go, Amen. You see somebody riding on a white horse uh, coming in the clouds of glory. Amen. With a heavenly host behind him. Uh, amen. Listen, you'll know he's real. Uh, amen. You know that he's existing. Uh, and yeah, he is a super God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He's big enough. Amen. To take care of every need that I've got. He's big enough. Amen. To do the impossible. He's big enough. Amen. To cause the Red Sea to dry up. I know you've heard this story before. I'm going to tell it again. Amen. There was this college professor one time. Amen. Telling the class that I've done research on this and I found out that at the place where Moses was supposedly across the Red Sea, that the Red Sea was only six inches deep. This old boy in the back, he fell out on the floor. They went back there and got some smelling sauce. I said, what's wrong with you? He said, it tore me up when you told me the water was only six inches deep where Pharaoh crossed the sea. He said, my, my God's bigger than I ever thought he was. He said, what do you mean? He said he drowned Pharaoh and all of his army in six inches of water. He said, I can't believe how big my God is. Amen, there's a big God, amen, that's on our side. Amen, there's a God that's able, amen, to change the mind of your spouse, to change your mind of your girlfriend, to change your mind of your boyfriend. Amen, he can help you set your kids in order if you will pray for them and cut you a limb out of the back tree in the backyard. Amen, with your prayer and a good switch, he'll get in order. Amen, you gotta do your part. Amen, the first. Amen, but God will make a way. Amen, where there is no way. Amen, he'll make things work. Amen, you can look at something, scratch your head, shake your head, stay up half the night. Amen, working on something that won't work and you can't figure it out. Amen, and you just pray and stand still and wait for the Lord and the Lord will give you something. Amen, to get you out of it. I remember back here. We was getting ready to start our live streaming. and I was trying to figure out how to hook that thing up, and I done talked to I don't know how many people about it. And they didn't nobody know how in the world I was going to get that from the camera all the way to the computer and get it into all them monitors and all this other stuff. Uh, amen, without uh, these splitters, and hey, it wasn't nothing going to work. It was going to go backwards at this place. You couldn't convert from this thing to something else. And I said, Lord, what in the world am I going to do? And I was sitting in the office, and I'd been praying, and I was just sitting looking at the wall, and all at once, I felt the presence of God come in that room, and he gave me a diagram. That's the truth on how to hook that thing up. And I called them, uh, up at B&H Video up in New York. I called them, and I said, uh, I want to ask you something. I, I'm trying to hook this up, and I want to see if this is working. This is what I feel the Lord showed me. And I said, uh, and these are Jewish people. So... <laughs> What a way to witness to people. And I said, uh, I said, this is what the Lord has shown me. I said, can I hook it from this to this? And they said, uh-huh, uh-huh. I believe, that, yes, I believe that will work. And they went back over to tell me again. I told them, they said, yes, it will. That will work. I said, put all that in a package and mail it down here. I gave them the credit card number, and we've been going ever since. See, God makes a way, uh, amen, where there seemed like there is no way. Uh, amen, we have to put our faith uh, and our trust in God. Uh, we don't need to make him the, the last resolution or the last resort uh, or the last thing that we turn to, but sometimes we do. He needs to be the first thing. Amen. That we go to. But in if, amen, yet you didn't. But in if, amen, the devil's had you in fear. But in if that you've been in bondage, amen. But in if, amen, you have failed, amen, don't whine, amen, and you spilt milk, get you a mop, and go back to the refrigerator for another bowl full. It'll be all right. Put your faith in your trusting God. Allow Him, amen, to come through for you. Allow Him, amen, to do what's necessary, amen, in your life. Amen, regardless of what it is. Amen. Sometimes we try to keep something that we don't need. Sometimes we keep from getting something that we're supposed to have. 
Amen. Sometimes we mess up, amen, in some things and make wrong decisions and sometimes, amen, doing the very best we can do, we struggle, amen, trying to find, amen, the will of the Lord. But here was a time, amen, where God's people, amen, I had been in bondage all these years, amen, they were headed to the wilderness, amen, Canaan land, amen, was only 40 years in front of them. An 11 day journey. <laughs> Amen, from the Red Sea into the land of Canaan. But because of their murmurings and because of their disbelief, every one of them that uh, would not believe in God, amen, had to die out before the others that did believe can make it into the promised land. Amen, but they had uh, an advantage. They're the only ones that ever had a pair of shoes that last you 40 years. Hey, man, I don't care where you get them. Red wings and none of the rest of them are going to last no 40 years. Don't matter what kind of brand that you get of what we have today. God can make a way on your journey, amen, when you have a hard time finding a way. See, there was a fire by night and there was a cloud by day, amen, that was leading them around and around. They passed right by the doorway into Canaan. No telling how many times and couldn't see it. It wasn't the right time. It just wasn't the right time yet. But God made a way for them. God allowed them. That's why some of you are going through things right now. Things has not worked out for you. It's been a, a long time. And you think, Lord, where are you? Lord, are you coming? Lord, are you going to ever get here? Lord, are you going to take this thing away from me? Or is it going to wind up destroying me? Lord, I've waited and waited and waited. And I can't wait anymore. And the Lord's saying, you got two more trips around this thing <laughs> them shoes uh, Lord they're beginning to hurt my feet he's saying just one and a half trips now <laughs> and I'm going to show you where the door is <laughs> the Lord these shoes are beginning to really bother me I don't know where you're coming or not uh, Lord I, I don't want to quit and the Lord's saying you got one more trip just one more trip, just hold on and you're not going to see the enemy anymore. You just hold on and the promise I give you is going to be there. You just hold on. You got a half a trip. I'm, I'm already there. I'm standing right at the door ready to open it for you. Oh, Lord, how much longer is it going to be? And he said, hold it here. Right here it is. And you think, oh, goodness, Lord. I passed right past that rock, right past that pond, right past that tree, amen, for the last 40 years, every time. And I didn't see no door there, and the Lord was thinking, there ain't no door there because I just made one. Praise the Lord. I just created a door. I just made a way for you. I didn't want you to see it until it's the right time. We got to get those things out of our life, out of our head, and we had to be willing to get rid of the things that he don't want us to have before he'll open the new door that he's ready for us to receive. Amen. Sometimes we have to, to lose this to gain that. Amen. Uh, you're never going to be able to get anything, amen, without a little bit of pain. Now, there was an old saying, we've heard this for years, no pain, no gain. Amen. And that's pretty well the truth. Uh, we're going to have to have some things, uh, amen, uh, that we're going to have to face uh, sometimes before that we ever receive the gain. Uh, amen. Sometimes, uh, amen, you under Lord, oh, where are you? There used to be an old comedy show on television years ago. It was Car 54. And in that show, they'd always say, Car 54, where are you? And sometimes that's the way we are about Jesus. Jesus, where are you? But see, he's where he's supposed to be. Hey Amen. We just got to get to where we're supposed to be. And we've got to get to where he wants us. Hey Amen. That's at the foot of the cross. Not just our body at the foot of the cross, but our heart and our soul and our money and our property and our relationships and everything that we own, everything that we have. Hey Amen. Lord, it ain't mine. It belongs to you. I'm bringing it to your feet. I've messed it up. It's out of order. It's out of line. There's no hope. It's not working. Lord, I give it to you. I surrender all this. I give it completely to you. And the Lord will say, well, I've been waiting on you. That's why you had to make so many trips. That's the reason why I prayed for 11 years, amen, for God to open some doors for me. And I was thinking by the time I got to the 11th year that I probably maybe was just wasting my time. But he told me what I'm going to do, I'm going to do quickly. And 11 years later, 
Everything that he did to open up my ministry, he done it in a six months period of time. What he done, he done quickly. Amen. A thousand years with the Lord is as one day, and one day is as a thousand years. What you think is such a long time. I was talking to someone the other day, and they said they was going through this really, really, really hard time right now. And they were praying for God, amen, to open a door and to do this and that in their church and so on. And I said, I understand. They said, how long did you have to wait on the Lord? I, I said, 11 years. You ought to have seen the look on their face. Hey, man, they was hoping 11 more hours would be about it. Hey, man, I'm telling you what, 11 years is a long time for some things. Now, if you're on death roll, it's going to fly by. Amen. But if you're waiting for God to open a door for you, 11 years is a long time. Hey, man, how many have you been to an amusement park and waited to ride a ride? I know, come on, now some more of you that's been to an amusement park and waited in line. How many of you waited an hour or two hours? Oh, yeah, I waited one time four hours. I won't never do that no more, and I hope I don't ever have to testify how stupid I was to do something like that. Hey, man, to wait four hours to ride a ride. And I thought that was the longest time. I've seen weeks pass by quicker than in four hours. You stand there on one leg and one hip, and then you switch over to the other. One. And then you swing in, you lean up again a, a rail. Then after our, about 10 minutes, praise God, you get to step up. Then you lean from one hip and one leg for a while till it gets numb and lean to the other. One. And you think, oh, Lord, I'm going to die. And then you get on that ride, you holler, whoopee, and it goes, Err! thank you. I hope you enjoyed your stay here. I thought, where's the rest of it? That was it. All of that long ride for that two minutes of yeah. Thank you for coming to to Kentucky Kingdom or wherever it was you was going. Be careful as you exit this ride. Have a safe day and come back and see us again. I thought, my goodness, all of that for a little of this. That's what all the world is about. But I want you to know all of this that we're going through, man, when we get to the next place, we're going to be home for an eternity. Amen. Where time will never exist anymore. Amen. And all of this stuff's going to be behind us. Amen. And we'll have not only uh, the hope that we had down here, we won't have hope up there, amen, uh, for something better because everything we're going to get is going to be right there. Everything we ever hope for, we're going to have it in front of us. Our bodies will never ache. Our bodies will never get sick. We'll never have a bill in the mailbox. We'll never have anybody lie to us. We'll never have anybody cheat us. We'll never have anybody do us wrong. We'll never have anybody make fun of us or put us down. Amen. That we'll never have anybody, amen, do anything that's painful or hurtful to us anymore. Amen. We'll never watch our kids, amen, be ripped apart by the devil and let's try to pray for them and get them to to leave the world alone, uh, amen, and they got their mind, uh, amen, I've got to get into that bag full of tricks, uh, amen, because I know there's a lot of fun in there, and you can't get them to see the death and the destruction that's awaiting them inside that bag to get them away from the harm and the suffering that they're about to receive. See, today there's many, amen, that are hurting all over this world today. My heart goes out to people. It don't matter where, you in, where you're at. It don't matter what country that you live in. It doesn't matter uh, how you've been raised. It don't matter what religion uh, that you were raised in. I want to tell you about a real religion. Amen. If you are putting your faith and trust in Buddha, uh, you can pray to him all you want to, and you ain't going to have none because he don't exist. Amen. You can pray to Muhammad all you want to. Amen. But it is, he just don't exist. You're not going to have anything that you can feel. Uh, amen. You can pray to the trees, and you can be uh, one of those that are tree huggers and loves nature and all of that, and you can feel good about a bird whistling in a tree, uh, and you can go hug that tree if you want to, but you ain't going to have anything you can feel in your heart. Uh, amen. You can do all of those things, uh, amen, that are sensual uh, and, and, and uh, that are full of vanity and things of that nature, but I want you to know there's only one person, uh, amen, only one God, uh, amen, you can pray to today that would send his prized possession his only begotten son uh, to, to, to live and to die on the cross. We're getting ready uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, celebrate Christmas uh, about the birth of the baby Jesus and how important it is, uh, amen, to celebrate the Christmas the right way. 
how wonderful that Jesus is. You can pray to him. He can relift them burdens off of you, and then he'll send the sweet Holy Ghost to live inside of your heart, and then you can say, wow, man, he's real. Hoo-wee. Hey, man. I've told this story many times. I won't tell it again. There was a young man that uh, came to church here for a long time, and uh, he was under conviction. He was probably in his 30s, and he was under conviction. I knew the Lord was a dealing with him, and uh, I seen him run to the go to the altar a time or two and pray a little bit, but he never did uh, pray through for a long time. And I thought, I'm just going to leave him alone, Brother Wayne, and just, just pray for him and just leave him alone and just uh, let God deal with him. Finally, one Sunday morning, he was sitting back here. He was a miserable looking fellow you ever seen in your life. And just the moment, his dad noticed how bad uh, he was that day in the service. And he went up, and he sat down right beside him and uh, said, do you feel like you need to pray? And he said, I'm going to have to do something. He said, won't you go up there and talk to Brother Jimmy right now? He said, don't you want to go pray? Well, he got up. He said, I'll go behind you. So he got up, and he come up here to the altar to pray. And I looked him right in the face, and I said, What's wrong? He said, dirty in here. He said, dirty, dirty. I said, well, brother, if you're dirty, I know somebody can clean you up. <laughs> Amen, through his precious blood. I said, let's just kneel right here at this altar. Let's pray together and let's believe. And he got down there and he prayed and I prayed for him. And after a little bit, I, I kind of uh, set up and was just leave, letting him pray. And all at once, right uh, in his praying, he lifted his head up and he said, Oh. He said, Ooh. He said, Oh. He said, Ooh. I said, What is it? He said, Oh. He said, I ain't felt nothing like that before. He said, Oh. I said, Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Amen. That's the Lord. You got the real thing. Amen. You can't get that through Muhammad. You can't get that through Confucius. You can't get that, amen, through Buddha. You can't get that through being a a tree hugger and a naturalist. You can't get that from a nudist colony. You can't get that from drugs. You can't get that from alcohol. Y'all ain't getting this. You can't get this, amen, from the other things in the world. Only through Jesus, amen, can you get anything that'll lift you higher than you ever been before. Only through Jesus. Jesus, amen, can you have the peace, amen, that's in your heart, amen, to know that, Lord, when I lay down tonight and I die in my sleep, I'll just float on into glory. It'll be okay. I don't have any burdens. I don't have any worries. I don't have any guilt and no shame and no fear. I'm not afraid to die. I'm kind of looking forward to it. I ain't afraid to leave this world. I'm getting ready for the next one, amen, because of what I feel in my heart, and I know that it's real. Only Jesus Amen, can give you that. He's the only God that anybody ever served that let his subjects kill him, wait three days in the grave, went and ministered to the spirits in prison, the word says. On the third day, come back, the angels came from God, rolled the stone away. He got up and took the napkin off his face and folded it to give the disciples and others a message. Then that message was, I'm coming back. And he laid the fold napkin down on the place where his body had laid. And he come walking out of the tomb that day. Amen. Stayed 40 days. Amen. Was seen by thousands of people. Amen, and then on the 40th day, he ascended up into heaven. Amen, and the angels told the disciples that were there, why do you stand here gazing up? This Jesus that you see going away shall return in like manner. (laughs) Well, glory, he's about ready to come back. Amen, so we don't have anything to fear. We don't have anything to dread. Amen, you don't have a car, no problem if you got Jesus. If you don't have a home, no problem if you got Jesus. If you don't have a job, no problem uh, if you got Jesus, as long as you're willing to work. I'm going to throw that in there. Amen. No problem. uh, Amen. If you got Jesus. Well, Brother Jimmy, I don't have a wife. No problem uh, if you got Jesus. Uh, If you listen to Apostle Paul, he'd beg you not to get one. Amen. Amen. The same thing to a husband. Amen. He'd beg you not to get one. Amen. Because he thought that you'd be better off to be like me is what he said. I'll let you take it up with the Lord. I'm glad I got my wife. I appreciate her earning my shirt and finding my socks. I don't. I wouldn't be able to make it without her. But anyway, but anyway, it's good to have one. But what I'm saying is, if you got a good one, 
Solomon said, it'd be better to live in the corner of a rooftop than in a house with a brawling woman. Wise man's all I'm going to say. It's right in the book of so- uh, the, in, in Solomon's writing. Amen. I'm <laughs> It's in there. It's in Proverbs. It sure is. Uh, amen. God's going to make a way. Amen. He's going to make a way. But you know, amen, you need to follow the Lord. Man, what a message. This is going to come out on New Year's, on TV, on Christmas Eve. I bet you are thinking, this ain't like what a Christmas message I thought it was going to be. Amen. I remember years ago, I come in on Sunday morning, I preached the hardest message on going to hell, lost, I ever preached. Amen. I'm going to follow the Lord. What we need is to listen to him. And I know that I preach this today because God told me to and because the Lord's sending a message out to somebody and letting you know you need to hold on because you're not going to see Egypt anymore from this day on. If you'll give your heart to Jesus, if you'll come to this altar this morning and pray and just say, Lord, I don't know if I'm saved or not. I thought I was, but I want to know for sure I'm saved before I leave this place. Or if you just need to come to this altar and say, Lord, I made some big mistakes, and I'm not going to get up and tell the whole church everything I've done, but I sure do need to give forgiveness and mercy and find grace at that altar of prayer today and get this stuff behind me. I need to find some way to, to, to be delivered from this thing. I need this elephant off my heart. I need this elephant out of my mind. I need this tiger that's about to eat me up. I need to know that today he is destroyed uh, and he will not bother me anymore. Uh, This is what Moses said in uh, uh, Exodus 14, 14. The Lord uh, shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Uh, So right now today in the midst of what you're going through, the Lord is fighting for you right now today. Don't that make you feel good? Hey man, Praise the Lord. Just tell the devil, amen, the Lord's going to whoop this thing pretty quick, amen, and it ain't going to bother me anymore. Would you stand with me? I want to say goodbye to the folks watching us by live streaming. Come back and be with us tonight. God bless you. And the folks listening by radio and by television, God bless you. Appreciate you joining us in our service today.